Hey family, how are you? Hopefully you're having an amazing Friday so far. The weather here in Ohio is, eh, it's warming up a little bit. It's like 45, it's supposed to be like 55 tomorrow and like 65 on Sunday and it's supposed to hit that 70 mark sometime next week. Maybe a little drop, but uh, hey, we're getting there. Spring is almost here. How you guys doing? Really, how you, good, how you guys doing? I'm a little tired. I'm a little exhausted, um, both physically and mentally. Been trying to work on um, being better fit, both spiritually and physically. Uh, so I woke up this morning and read and prayed and studied and worshiped and had my time with God. And then I went to the gym and worked out. And uh, to be honest, I'm a little tired. <laughs> but uh, you'll have that. But uh, I got home. And even though I was just really just exhausted and my brain is just honestly just fried right now. You ever have the moments where it's like, you know, it's like you almost feel like the leading of the Holy Spirit prompting you to get into your word. And you're like, I don't really feel like it. I just don't really feel like it. But, you know, you push through sometimes because you just, you know, you have to. Because if you don't, you'll get in that bad area of just stagnation where you you don't do anything because you don't want to do anything you don't feel like doing anything you know when we choose not to listen to our flesh and we adhere to the spirit that's when life will be better for us you see so many times it's hard to do that i have failed so many times because i have chose to get in my feels in a moment just because I didn't feel like doing it. To be honest with you, if you're not wrapped up in your word every day, you're not going to feel like reading the word of God. If you're not one that prays every day, when you think about prayer, it probably doesn't seem so exciting to you, does it? Sometimes you have to motivate yourself the bible speaks of pushing yourself sometimes you have to motivate yourself in the lord because we love being on the mountaintop really we do but guys we can't live on the mountaintop forever I'm just being real with you. That's life. Whether you're serving God or you're not serving God. You're not going to be able to live on the mountaintop forever. So sometimes you have to motivate yourself. You have to, you have to push yourself. And you'll find that when you start to push. That God will begin to unlock things. That you will find your strength back. Even in a weak moment, when you lean upon him, he is your strength. You don't feel like opening up the Bible? Open up the Bible anyway. Start reading. Because I tell you what, God will blow your mind with what you read. You know, we stand at a crossroads, guys. Our flesh tells us to grab that remote. Push that power button. And watch some Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu or Disney or HBO. Whatever you got, I don't know. But our flesh would rather click this than to turn the pages of the Bible. Our fleshly eyes would rather watch the big screen than pay attention to the big God. That's just facts. But see, when we turn our flesh over to the Spirit, something, something begins to transform. We're not walking according to the flesh anymore. We don't allow the flesh to make decisions for us. You see, when we turn ourselves over to God, we give God control. We give the Holy Spirit access to our life. In doing so, we say, I will not walk according to my flesh. I will not walk according to 
my understanding, but I totally surrender myself to God. And I'm going to be honest with you. Surrendering yourself to God is not always easy. It is not always comfortable. Maybe it's not always fun. But it's the best thing that you can do in this life is to surrender yourself to God, to fully give yourself to God. Is the race hard? Yes. Is there obstacles on the course? Yes. Definitely there are obstacles. Christian or no Christian, there's obstacles in life. There's obstacles that you must face. There's hard decisions that you must make. But God, but God, amen. So we have to push through and allow the Holy Spirit to be our guide. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to order our steps. The Bible says that his word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. If we are not filled with his word, if we are not consumed by his word, we don't have that light and we don't have that lamp. So guess what? We're walking around aimlessly in the dark because we do not have a sense of direction. When we choose to live life on our own without God, without his word, and without his Holy Spirit, without his direction in life, we are saying, I choose to walk alone on a dark path with no illumination, not knowing where I'm going, just throwing caution to the wind. If I get there, I get there. If I don't, I don't. And we wonder sometimes why we end up in the places that we do because we walk around carelessly when God has the answers in his hand, when God has given you the tools that you need, but we don't use them. You're in a dark place. God is trying to give you light. He's physically handed you illumination. He's physically, spiritually handing you a flashlight that you could be guided by. A lighthouse that you could look up to, but we ignore it. And sometimes we walk according to our flesh and we find out before long, if we don't adhere to the Holy Spirit, if we will not follow the directions of our Father, if we choose to walk around, float around aimlessly, just hoping that we get somewhere, you're gonna end some you're gonna end up somewhere you never wanted to be. And that's if you don't end up shipwrecked. If you don't end up shipwrecked. Amen. Praise God. But I wanted to read you this today. Out of Psalms 91. The Passion Translation. I love this. Psalms 91 and 4 says, His massive arms. Massive. Think about the arms of God. Think about how strong he is. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. You know, when I think about winning a fight or choosing a team, if I had to pick somebody to be on my team and I wanted to win, I would not go for the scrawniest, weakest dude I would go for somebody that, that is strong, that is built, that is tall, that is beefy, that I know that could handle the fight. You have a God that handles your fight if you turn it over to him. He has massive arms. If you allow him to, he'll wrap the massive arms around you and he'll protect you. And you can run under his covering and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from a harm. Amen. Amen. Allow that to sink in a little bit today. Are you allowing God's massive arms to be wrapped around you? Or are you wrapped up in everything else but his arms? Hmm. 
God bless you guys.